hello everyone welcome to my channel and welcome to our rapture ready series today we'll be looking at episode 10 what we do for others for those of you who are just joining for the first time i want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel hit the notification button so you won't miss an episode and i also want to encourage you to go and listen to the previous uh, presentations and i believe they will bless your life so today we're going to look at what we do for others as believers as christians what we do for others the first thing i want to talk about is that God himself demonstrated his ultimate love for humanity by giving us his one and only son. We read that in the popular scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we see that God demonstrated his love towards humanity. And we also read in the book of 1 John chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 7, that God is love. God is love. The nature of God is that God is love. And when you become born, when you become born again, you share in that divine nature of his love. Believers who have been born again share in that divine nature. God is love. So he his children that he will that his children will also be loved. They will share in that nature. You know, and I want to emphasize on the word that God gave. For God so loved humanity that he gave all he had. And true love is manifested through what we give. Through what outflows from our lives. We know of Abraham who gave his only son Isaac. When God asked him to sacrifice his son. And he gave up Isaac to God to show his commitment his love his devotion to God and Jesus Christ himself he laid down his life he gave his life and in John chapter 15 verse 13 he said there is no greater love greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends so we see that God the Father, God the Son, demonstrated His love for humanity by giving. By giving. So how is our own love as believers demonstrated? First John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 this is how we know what love is jesus christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him how can the love of god be in him dear children let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Did you hear that? This is how we demonstrate God's love. So we cannot say we love God and it does not show up in our actions. In what we do for others. Because God himself demonstrated his love by giving us his best. His one and only son. A self-centered life is the very antithesis 
of the God kind of love that Jesus demonstrated to us. The love of God is demonstrated through what we give to others. Just as God himself demonstrated his love towards us by giving us his one and only son. And the Bible is very clear that we will be rewarded based on what we do for others or what we did for others. And we can see that in the parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew 25 from verse 34. Let me just read a part of that scripture to us. Matthew 25, 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those, now first of all, before, before you come to that, he, he talked about the parable, how he is going to separate the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right hand side and the goats on his left hand side, right? And then from verse 34, he will, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you give me something to eat. I was thirsty and you give me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and we invited you in? Or needing clothes and we clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king, the, the king will reply, I tell, you the, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Very interesting, right? Whatever we do for others in need, in the name of the Lord, we do for Christ. Think about that. So living to please ourselves alone will not in any way be credited to our account. Now listen to this, listen to this, uh, the, the, this parable that Jesus gave. The things that he was talking about that the sheep did, he wasn't talking about what they did for th themselves. They weren't being rewarded for what they did for themselves. They were being rewarded for what they did to others. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you gave me clothes. He was talking about what these people gave. And of course we know that for the goats who were on his left, these ones, they did nothing for others. They lived for themselves alone. Of course they did things for themselves. There's no doubt about that. They did things for themselves, but you know, those things they did for themselves didn't, didn't quite count. It was not credited to their account. And they were not rewarded for what they did for themselves. The reality is this. We will not be rewarded for the things we do for ourselves. Because it is a, every, because it is a given that people do things for themselves. We do things for ourselves. It is okay to do things for ourselves. But that is really not going to count what we do for ourselves. It is what we do for others that we can. Well, 
So if if you have been living for yourself as a Christian, you have all your investments has been on yourself rather on the, than on the kingdom of God. I want to say that it's not too late. It's not too late yet. You have the opportunity to make a U-turn. Because you cannot, con you cannot continue on this path of only looking after yourself. And living for yourself. You cannot continue on this path of self-life and expect to be rewarded by God in heaven. You can make a U-turn. We are called to be servants. And that's why you see most of the letters of Paul, of Apostle Paul, he will say, Paul, a born servant of Christ, a servant of Jesus Christ. True, we are sons and daughters of God, but we are also called into servanthood. We are called to serve. A servant serves other people. That's why they are called servants. They are not called servants because they serve themselves. They are called servants because they serve other people. So we are called to be servants. Even in the various parables that we have read, the parable of the talents, say the master called his servants. In the minors, he said the master called his ten servants. So it's all about servanthood. We are called to serve others. Right? And in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 35, the Bible says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed. It is far more blessed to give than to receive. So I want to I want to encourage us if you are a Christian, a disciple of Jesus, listening to this message, that don't just be a consumer Christian. What do I mean by consumer Christian? Consumers are only on the receiving on the receiving end. They have nothing to contribute, they have nothing to put on the table. No, you cannot just be a consumer. God has not called us to be consumers. But rather, we should be stewards. Stewards of His manifold grace. Because He has blessed us with everything that we need in life. And the things that He has blessed us with, He expects us to use them. As a blessing to bless other people. To be a blessing to our generation. To be a blessing to our neighbors. To be a blessing to our friends. We as Christians. We need to reorder. Reorder our mindset. From a life of self. Just thinking about me. Myself. My immediate family. We now have to look beyond that and say, look, God, I'm here to serve. Use me as your instrument to serve other people. This is really, really important. You remember when Jesus was about to feed the 5,000? The, the 5,000 people or more than 5,000. Five, the, the Bible says 5,000 men without counting women and children. So, I assume probably at least 20,000 people. And five loaves and two fish, five loaves and two fishes from that little boy. When they presented them to Jesus, Jesus took those five loaves and two fishes and broke them, gave them to the disciples. And what did the disciples do with the bread? 
They didn't sit down and say, let's feed ourselves first. Let's eat and be satisfied before we give to the crowd. No, that's not what they did. The Lord Jesus broke them and he put them in the hands of the disciples. And the disciples did the distribution. They gave the bread, the fishes, the bread to all the hungry people. And I believe they did that and before they took care of themselves, they gave and fed this multitude of people. That's exactly the picture when God called us. He, when he calls us, he puts bread in our hands. And that bread is not just for ourselves. It is for us to give out what he has put in our hands. To feed the hungry people out there. So I want to encourage you. If you have not subscribed to this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next episode. I want to believe that this has blessed you. There are a few discussion questions that you can discuss in your small group on how you can become a distributor, a steward, a servant, and how you can do things for others and be a blessing to other people. So God bless you. I will see you in the I will see you next week in the next episode. I want you to hold on and be prayerful and prepare your heart for the return of Jesus. Prepare your heart, prepare your life for the coming of the Lord because his coming is just at the door. And these things that we'll be looking at are the things that prepare us for his coming. God bless you. I'll see you the next episode.